Hello, I'm David Guthrie with His Word Lives Ministry. Again, I welcome you to this Christian ministry. And it warms my heart to see so many viewers watching this ministry. The message today is He Bearing His Cross. He Bearing His Cross. We're talking about Jesus and His crucifixion. We're in the book of John in chapter 19, and we're going to read verses 16 through 27 this morning. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Galgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him on either side one and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but write that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam woven from the top throughout. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not rent it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith to the disciple. Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own house. We see here where they have taken Jesus from Pilate. And then they have taken him and led him, led him away. And he bearing his cross. Jesus was carrying his cross to the crucifixion as far as he possibly could. And there was a writing that Pilate put on the cross. Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. You know, Jesus had questioned Jesus about, I mean, Pilate had questioned Jesus about whether he was a king or not. And he told him that that's what he had come and was born to do. And Pilate put this on. But the Jews wanted it to say that he said he was the king of the Jews. But Pilate said, it is what I have said. And it is true. Jesus is the king. The king of all earthly kings. The king of everything in heaven and in earth. Jesus, the Christ. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus is the king of everything. God the Father has put any, any and everything underneath him. He has authority over all things. Jesus is the king. And one day he will come again. He will come again upon this earth. And he will be known as the king of kings and lord of lords forever and ever and ever. 
I want you to know that these men thought that they had done away with Jesus. These chief priests and high priests and Jews that wanted to, to continue in their authority and in their stature, their religious stature of the day. And they wanted a Jewish nation of, of religiousosity and their, 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 their authority. But Jesus will soon come again out of the grave. They weren't able to do away with him. <clears throat> so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. So that the truth of God's holy words prophesied and told many years before this crucifixion took place. They parted his garment. And they cast lots for his coat. And this is what really happened. This is what is told happened here in the scriptures by John. And as he was on the cross, he looked and he saw his mother, his mother Mary. And he said, woman, behold thy son. Jesus knew that he had come for this purpose. He knew that he had come so that people could know the Son of God. The angel had told Mary at his birth or when she found out that she was to have Jesus as a son. The Holy God, the angel told her, and told her that she would bear a son that would be known as the Son of God. Now Jesus looks down upon her. I wonder if she was thinking that at this time. And he also told John to behold thy mother. In other words, to take care of my mother. That's what Jesus had told him. The thought that I have this morning is that Jesus... <clears throat> He bearing his cross. He bearing the life that God the Father had instructed him to do many times. God the Father had provided his works for Jesus to do many times. We know this from Jesus' writings in that he says that those that follow me were given to him by God the Father. For the works that he does, the signs and the miracles were designed and directed by God the Father. Jesus tells us this. Jesus took up his cross all through his life, being persecuted and ridiculed and challenged all the way through. And even to the point where they would rather a robber be released rather than Jesus, the king of the Jews. He was taken and crucified on a cross, beaten terribly all night long, and then whipped in the morning with flesh being torn. And then he carries his cross to the place of his crucifixion. He was bearing his cross, not only physically carrying the cross, <clears throat> but carrying the work and the ministry that he was to do in his ministry here on earth. He was to go to the cross and die as a sacrifice for all the sins of the world, for your sins and my sins and all the sins of the world. And Jesus did this. Persecuted an innocent, just man. Had never sinned. But he went to the cross. <clears throat> because he was contrary. He was not of this world. He was a divine nature. Perfect. He spoke the truth about God. And because of this. He was accused of blasphemy as he was just telling the truth. He is 
the Son of God. He is what the angel told Mary when she realized she was going to conceive this holy God. The Son of God hung on the cross, looked down, saw his mother, and they had to remember his purpose, the reason he was there, so that all the world could know that he is the Son of God, Jesus bearing his cross. Praise God and be thankful in your life that Jesus did bear his cross. <clears throat> you know, Jesus in his teaching tells us to bear our cross. In the book of Luke, in, in chapter 9, 23, it says, And he said unto them all, <clears throat> This is all of his disciples. This is us, believers, today. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Jesus is telling us today and every day of our life to take up our cross and follow Jesus. Take up the work. Take up the guidance. Take up the blessed assurance that we are a part of the family of God and follow Jesus every day in our life, teaching the gospel out into the world, preachers preaching the word of God out into the world so that people might hear and know about Jesus and come under conviction and realize that they're a sinner, they're lost and going to hell, and that they might get down on their knees and proclaim Jesus as their Lord and their Savior and the Son of God, and he will forgive them. Let us today take up our cross wherever God is leading you, whatever door is being opened up to share the gospel, whatever ministry work that is being uh, made possible for you today, Take up your cross today and follow Jesus. Praise God for this message. <clears throat> I'd like to pray for Helen Hammonds. And she asked prayer for her husband and his health. And she also asked prayer for a neighbor that's in the nursing home. I want to pray for Pat Chandler and for her husband Harvey and their family in his health, in this, this situation, in this time. I'd like to pray for Matt Fry, that he has a good day and a closer walk with God. I'd like to pray for Matthew Brand, <coughs> and his engine in his car has frozen up. So we would like to pray that God would open up a door, that he would have some new transportation. I'd like to pray for Melissa Williams, that she has a good day and a closer walk with God. I'd like to pray for Linda Freeman, and she has prayer for her great-granddaughter and her husband, as they're having a baby any time. Praise God. I'd like to pray for Linda McNeil, that's got an unspoken prayer request. And we just lift that up to Jesus. And we pray that she has a good day and a closer walk with God. I'd like to pray for Kathy Green and, Cl and Cliff Criswell. That they have a, a good day and a closer walk spiritually with God today. I'd like to pray for Sabrina Stone. And she tells me that she's sending the video on to another. This is the DVD ministry where she has gotten a DVD sharing the gospel and she's sharing it with other people. Praise God for this ministry and for Sabrina sharing and participating in the DVD ministry. Now we sent out a number of different requests for prayer 
and telling people that we're going to pray for them to have a good day and a closer walk with God today. We lift up all of those people. They know who they are. Now you lift up your prayer requests as we go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, we come to you in prayer. Father, we praise you for the ministry that you sent Jesus to do, your son upon this earth. Oh, Jesus, we praise you and we thank you, God, for making it possible for us to have a way to have a relationship with God and to know the truth that you are the Son of God. And to know the truth that we are sinners and we need a Savior. <clears throat> God, we thank you for the life that you make possible for us through having and knowing your salvation. God, let us look upon our life today and how we can pick up our cross and follow you in your ministry today. And we lift up all these prayer requests along with the prayers for the, from the viewers right now, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. He bearing his cross. Praise God. Thank you.